So yes, I'm presenting the gaps in the cascade of care in two high prevalence settings in Zimbabwe and Malawi. Um, so that's this one. So HIV population-based survey enabled to measure HIV outcomes at community level to define and prioritize intervention in HIV program. MSF started the implementation of HIV activities in its two settings of Gutu in Zimbabwe and Nsanje in Malawi in 2011 using the mentoring approach by decentralizing the ART diagnosis and treatment from hospital to clinic. MSF took the operational decision of implementing this population-based survey in these two settings to give information on HIV outcome, to estimate the impact of the monitoring approach after five years of implementation, and to define plans and intervention. Also last year, national surveys were implementing in Zimbabwe and Malawi at national level, which gave us the opportunity to compare the findings of our surveys with the outcomes of the national survey. So briefly to show you where the two settings are located. So Nsanji is at the bottom of uh, Malawi, surrounded by Mozambique, and uh, Gutu uh, at the middle of uh, Zimbabwe. In terms of study objectives, so I'm presenting here the objective for the one we have the result in this presentation, but we had also other objectives. So the primary objective was to estimate the population viral load among the adult more or equal than 15 years old. We took as a definition of viral load uh, suppression, uh, all viral, uh, viral load the result less than 1,000 copies per milliliter. As a secondary objective, uh, it was to estimate the cascade of care among HIV positive uh, more uh, equal than 15 years old, to estimate the HIV prevalence among the more equal than 15 years old, and to estimate the ART coverage among HIV positive more or equal than 15 years old. So cross-sectional population survey were implemented in Gutu and uh, Nsanji district between September and December 2016 using multi-stage cluster sampling. We recruited all individuals aged uh, equal or more than 15 years old and eligible children less than five years old in Gutu district and Nsanji district at the living at the time of the survey. But here I will only present um, the results for the adult. In terms of study procedures, so the team went to the household uh, randomly selected um, and asked uh, the consent of the head of the household for interview, and they performed the household questionnaire. Through the household questionnaire, they could identify uh, all eligible individuals, um, and after receiving their consent, they performed the adult questionnaire. Then they, they had a pre-counseling session before having HIV test on spot. Then, according to uh, the result of uh, the HIV test, for positive and uh, discordant, uh, they receive a post counseling session, then a questionnaire on HIV and ART. We also draw blood for additional uh, testing for uh, those participants to conduct viral load, genotyping, ART blood level, incidence. We also conducted CD4 in GUTU. And for 10% um, of uh, the participants that were positive, uh, we conducted HIV confirmatory test for quality control. So in terms of uh, participation and inclusion rate, so in GUTU, 2,400 households were completed and 5,440 individuals eligible. And we had um, good uh, inclusion rate with uh, 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 overall 89% of uh, individual, individuals sorry, included and tested. In Nsanje, um, we completed 2,440 households, 5,322 individuals were eligible, and overall also a good inclusion rate with 87.8% of individuals uh, included and tested. In terms of um, socio-demographic characteristics, um, so in both settings, most, uh, half of, sorry, most of half of the participants were women, most of half participants were, were married, farmers, and living continuously in, uh, in the district. The median age of the participant was 36 years in Gutu and 33 years in Nsanji. In terms of HIV prevalence, um, so for the MSF survey overall in Gutu, we had 13.6% of prevalence and 12.1% in Nsanji. 
Uh, we can see in both settings that prevalence among women uh, was higher than prevalence among men. Also stratified by gender and age group, uh, we can see that in both settings that the HIV prevalent curve is increasing slow, more slowly uh, for men than women. And for both settings also, we got a low prevalence for among young adults. So now I'm going to show you um, the results in the comparison of the 1990-90 coverage between uh, the surveys implemented in the GUTU and the national survey. And to do so, we restricted our result to the age to 15 to 60, uh, 65, 64 years uh, to match with the age group of, uh, of the national survey. So as you know, um, UNET has recently uh, set up the target of 1990-90. So the objective is that by 2020, 90% of people living with HIV will be diagnosed. So is what is represented in the first part of the diagram with the first 90 diagnosed. By 2020, 90% of diagnosed people will be enrolled on ART. So that will be represented on the second part of the graph. And then by 2020, 90% of people in treatment will have fully suppressed viral load, and what we represent in, in the graph. MSF, uh, it's uh, the red, uh, in red and is not appearing here, but the national survey is in blue. So what we can see that uh, overall, we have a good result in the 1990-90 coverage. And we can see that there is a difference between uh, good two settings and the national level for the two first uh, uh, 90 coverage. And we didn't see a difference for the third one. Among women, again, we can see uh, good uh, results uh, in, uh, in good two settings, also in national settings. But we can see also uh, a difference uh, uh, between uh, MSF survey in, and the national survey in the two uh, first uh, 90s, but no difference in the third 90. Among men, uh, again, uh, good results with the difference in the first uh, 90. Uh, even though among men, we can see that uh, the diagnosed uh, coverage was uh, lower than women. We could identify the gaps uh, in, uh, in GUTU uh, to show that uh, adult, uh, young adult uh, 15 to 24 years old were 71% to be diagnosed, and um, young men less than 30 years old were 58% um, to be diagnosed. So now will be the result of NSNG. Uh, again, same uh, to, uh, to show um, the comparison between uh, NSNG sitting and the national survey in Malawi. So we can see overall that uh, the results are good uh, for both surveys, but we could not see a difference between uh, the MSF survey and uh, the uh, national survey. It was exactly the same for women. Uh, no, no really a difference uh, um, for the first uh, 90, second 90, and third 90. And for men, uh, we see a difference uh, compared to women with a lower, lower coverage among men, um, but no difference in terms of uh, diagnosis on ART or viral load suppression between the two surveys in GUTU and the national survey. Here again, uh, we identify the gaps uh, among uh, diagnose, uh, of, uh, um, the adult diagnose. So with 64.3% of uh, young, adult, young adult diagnosed and 42.3% uh, of men less than 30 diagnosed. <coughs> So what we can say about uh, this uh, finding, so we could see that uh, there is an aging HIV positive population, uh, and um, about 25% of all HIV positive uh, were more than uh, 50 years old. We had very good results in the 1990-90 coverage outcomes in uh, both settings, but uh, we could highlight a gender and age group imbalance, specifically in the first 90 of diagnosed. Um, 
there is uh, specifically in Gutu uh, difference, uh, significant difference between uh, the Gutu survey and uh, the national survey. And uh, we could see, um, uh, we can estimate that there is an impact of uh, Gutu uh, project in this setting. Um, we use the same method uh, that uh, the national survey, so we are confident of, uh, of, uh, that the difference is real. Um, we could see that in Ensange there was uh, no difference uh, in uh, the 1990-90 coverage, and in both settings that uh, the third 90 uh, was also uh, similar between uh, the MSF survey uh, and uh, the national survey. So um, based on these results is to see how to move forward in this program um, and to, um, to uh, choose a strategic uh, operation um, uh, in these settings. In terms of li limitation, we have still uh, very low test results uh, in GUTU uh, to, uh, to enter. And also uh, during, uh, on the questionnaire, the ART was self-reported. Although uh, the team, when they came to the, to the household, uh, they, they asked to see, uh, for people who reported to be on ART, to see the health booklet. In terms of strength, it, were, it is a cross-sectional survey that uh, allowed the representativity of the population living in both settings. We had a high participation rate uh, even, even among men, and we could compare our results between uh, our results of the survey with the national survey. So I wanted to uh, thank uh, all the study participants, the community also of uh, both uh, settings, uh, all the team who worked uh, very hard uh, on uh, this survey, and um, MSF for Zimbabwe and Malawi, and uh, all other partners. Thank you. Th thank you very much, Nolwen. Um, we have time for a few questions. Looking around the room, so we have one, two, three, four. Uh, let's start with that end of the room, and we will take the question and then the answer at the same time. Yes, go ahead. Uh, hi, um, can you hear me? Yeah, Nathan, WHO. Um, you, you, so the second 90 measures the number of people on treatment, and the third is the, is the number on treatment who have a viral load suppressed. Um, what that doesn't capture is mortality and loss to follow-up. So I think if you're asking the question, what's the added value of MSF's program, it would be important to also compare those critical outcomes. Um, or am I wrong? Does the virological suppression include death and loss to follow up as? Uh, no. No, okay. Yeah, thank you. So, but, oh, sorry, so the question was, um, uh, do so, you so, have so, an idea? <laughs> do you have I, an I idea? I thought she answered your question. To follow up in the program? <laughs> Okay. Do I have yeah. what, sorry? Do you have a sense of mortality and loss to follow up in the MSF programs? Um, I think so. I don't, I, I'm sorry, I cannot really answer to this question. I think you to us, to, uh, to uh, the field team. Coffee break discussion. Thank you. Next one. <laughs> um, there's a question up here. Yes, please. Hi, I'm Bev Stringer. I work with MSF. Thanks for an interesting presentation. I see that you work closely with the Ministries of Health in both locations. Have you discussed with them um, your results, especially linked to your male participants and what further information you might gather with regards to that? So for this question, I, uh, I'm going to answer on behalf of the team because I'm not, uh, I'm not working in the... I think there was a presentation in, uh, in, both, uh, in both settings, yeah. Thank you. But I, again, I'm, I'm uh, not part of the operational team, so maybe people can answer to that better than me. But I think there was, because it was uh, the plan, so I think it was presented recently. Thanks. Um, right at the back of the room, yes. Yes, thank you. Um, sorry if I missed it at the beginning, but um, what was the actual rationale for doing the survey? Like, was there any reason to mistrust the national survey data? or No, no, no. Sorry. Because uh, also then, like, your, your results were quite similar to the ones uh, that were then uh, uh, becoming clear from the national survey. And yes, the question remains, what is the implication for the MSF team? So sorry if I 
missed that one. No, as mentioned, maybe I was not clear at the beginning. As mentioned, is uh, MSF is working in these two settings for five years now, and it was also to evaluate uh, the program, so to see what's the impact of the program compared to the national level. So is it is it a reason uh, um, how to orient the program? Is it a reason to stay? Is it to, uh, a reason to orient For instance, we could see gap among male or young persons. So how how to orient the program in the? It was not at all to uh, to mistrust. Uh, the national uh, the the national survey and actually could see as uh, we uh, could uh, show in this uh, in this presentation for instance in gutu we can see a difference between uh, the self and the setting in gutu and the national uh, um, and the country so we can estimate that there is a real impact of this program um, uh, of msf in this in this area